this is Amy. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to paint a floral design using a flat brush on this brown glass bottle. It's actually a Seagram, Seagram 7 bottle. I have uh, washed it, removed the labels, gone over it with rubbing alcohol, so it's ready to go. The brushes I'm using today are four flat brushes by Mat a Magic. I do have this link below with affiliate links that you can purchase them through. I'm using a 14, a 12, an 8, and a 4. And then I am using a number 10 Deer Foot Stippler. All the paints I use are book art paints. I am using a mixture of multi-surface and enamels. This is Thicket, Wicker White, School Bus Yellow, Fresh Foliage, uh, Red Violet, Yellow Ochre, and Perfect Purple. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to begin using my Deerfoot Stippler. I'm going to put the front, because it, it kind of has an angle here. I don't know if you've ever used one of these. But I'm going to tip it into the yellow ochre, put the heel of it into the uh, school bus yellow, and just do a little tap, and I'll just keep adding it as I go. So basically, I'm going to just do the front of the bottle for the purpose of the video, and I'm going to start by pouncing in the beginning of the centers. And the reason I say that because I will pounce over them again as I create and I'm going to try to fit in five of them because that's what I did on my paper because if you're new to my channel I always create my design on a paper and then I try to simulate it or try to come as close to it as possible while I'm doing the video but I have to adjust it at times because I don't have the same amount of space on the items that I'm painting on. And I will come back and address that. Now I'm going to start with the number 14 flat brush. I'm going to put one side into the wicker white, one side into the red violet, and do a blending stroke. Typically you're supposed to fill your brush up three quarters of the way up. If you follow me, you know I'm not real particular about this. And as I continue to paint, I just keep adding paint in. All right, so let's begin. And I'm going to move this plate so that I have more room. Very simple. Again, this is another one of my just wiggly leaves, but I'm trying to keep them thin like that. And then I just keep going around. Keep it thin because I have a tendency to make things wide. Not sure why, but I do. And you can leave some space in between the petals or you can overlap them. That's up to you. But I'm choosing to leave some space in between as much as possible. Some might have to be over, um, you know, layered in order to complete the flower, but and I don't really care how many petals you use. I'm just going around the circles and adding in what fits. And this is no particular flower. This is just something I just started painting and kind of created. It might look like something, but in particular, but it's really not intended. It's just a a design. I'm going to go back up over it because it curves a little bit and then just come back down like that. So there will be a little bit of a space. Then I'm going to come over here, trying to space them out a little bit since I'm not only doing five. I'm trying to space them out a little bit because I'll put a different color. I'm going to use the I always get this one confused. Perfect purple for the remaining two. So again, just do a light wiggle. Keep it, 
keep it kind of up towards the chisel edge just so that you don't push it down and make it a f too fat of a leaf because that's what gets you if you put pressure on the brush. Once you're done, allow your design to dry for about an hour and then put it into a cold oven and allow your oven to preheat with your bottle inside because you don't want any quick temperature change. That's what will cause your glass to break. So basically put your, your bottle in, then start the oven, preheat it, use, add the preheat time to your bake time, and then let it bake. I add, my preheat time is about 20 minutes. So make sure, you know, you do whatever yours is and add it to. If you bake it a little longer, it's not gonna hurt anything if you're not sure. And then allow it to bake your time frame that requires with this particular paint is 30 minutes. So pay attention to the manufacturer uh, directions on whatever paint you're using because there's such a variety of glass paint anymore. And then once it's done, it's real important just to allow the oven to cool off. And some people ask, well, how long? Well, I mean, I'd give it a few hours just to make sure. The main thing is that you just don't want to bring your glass item out and then have it break because you change the temperature too quickly. And as far as the type of bottles, any bottle, if you're doing glassware, I mean, that can be really anything. Uh, any, probably the cheaper the better. Um, now look at this. Here I could go ahead and paint a, lead, or a petal over this one, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it because it kind of overlaps it a little bit there. So that's fine. The next one I'm going to do is the number 12. Going to... I had a little bit of water in this, so it dripped out on my paper here. Going to tip it into the, the perfect um, purple and the wicker white. Do my blending strokes. And again, I just, as I'm going, I just keep adding paint. I don't always do a blending stroke when I add paint. That's just my way. Now, just remember to, as you become more experienced painting, you're going to find techniques that work for you that may be different than what I do. That's perfectly fine. And know that that's okay. And that's, just because I do something a certain way, doesn't mean that's the only way it can be done. And doesn't mean it's wrong or it's right. It's however you want to do it, however you see it, you know, feel free to use your creative mind. That's what's important here. Now, when you're going over wet on wet, like I'm pulling in some of the color from underneath, that's fine. If you don't want to do that, you can hit your item with a heat gun, hair dryer, something along that line. To minimize that, still might pull up some, but it will minimize doing that. Sorry, if you allow dry time or use, like I said, one of the items I suggested to speed it up a little bit. Now this one decided to start to split a little bit here, so I'm just being cautious and covering it up because I do not want those holes. All right, so I'm gonna continue here. Just do thin petals. And I have to keep reminding myself because I have a tendency to start off thin and get them a lot larger, wider. And this is a fun, just a fun little design. 
Now keep in mind you can use other colors if you want to make all these different flowers into a different color. That would be fun. I did one yesterday that was very colorful. Very springish, summerish. And it was with, I think, a round brush. Like I said, just very relaxing. And that's what I'm trying to do. My channel is meant to be very easy and great for beginners. Because I, I want people to, to have some kind of a hobby that's relaxing and something that you know anybody can do basically all right so let's move on the next one i'm using is a number eight and i'm going to do the same thing double load into the thicket and the fresh foliage might tip into the school by shell a little bit and you can do that back and forth if you want. You know, do that sometimes or, uh, and then change it up. Okay, now this, these leaves are gonna be a little bit different. And just because, I say that just because I typically do more of the wiggly, those are my favorite. So that's why I'm saying that. But these are just gonna be kind of smooth on both sides. And I think I might do this one again. Anytime you feel like it's too thin, just go back over it. Now you can let it dry and do that. That's up to you. And then I'm going to just pull a little stem through it. My main thing is I worry is I'm very good about tipping my bottle and hitting it as I'm painting. So that's one challenge I have. Okay, so you can do it where you just go like this, pull it down. And if you are, now you can do it more like a heart, where you come up a little bit and then pull it down. Or you can do it more straight across either way. But a good surface to practice on, if you're looking for that, is wax paper. It's affordable. It's easy. You know, easy, gives a very similar texture. And if you're feeling a little frustrated, you could easily practice on that and get the feel for it. That's the main thing is you're, you're basically training your, your hands to feel it. Okay, so like on this one I did kind of, you know, it's a little bit different than that. Now I can do, again, do more like the heart shape. And come out, and I can also rotate colors. I'm sorry, I'm trying so hard not to mess this up. I can come out here, kind of just tip it up a little bit. And I've got the seven right here for the Seagram's bottle that I'm painting over right now. A little hard because it dips in here. Make sure I give it good coverage. All right, and come in like that. And then again, I'm just watching what I'm doing here, trying to make sure I don't touch the other side. So far, so good. Okay, let's move over here to this side. And so you can go like this if you want, and then just swing it around. And I caught into that purple, which you may or may not want to do. Just go back over it. If you get to the point where your brush is so full of paint that it's hard to paint, hard to get crisp, then just wipe it off on a paper towel and keep going. You can also do, and I don't want, I did get a little purple there. I don't want to do it on this one since I haven't been doing it, but you could change the colors so that the light is on the outside or that there's light on one side, dark on the other, vice versa. I'm going to stick with the dark. 
because that's how I've been doing it. I just don't want to change in the middle and not have it match up. All right, we're getting close to being done with the leaves. You know, you can just keep, keep painting. You don't have to do the heart shape if you don't want it. I want them to line up better. So I'm going to go back over this one, turn it and come it back down. And then draw a line through the center. And probably just end up with one more. Am I getting it on there? I hope so. And there we go. Pull it in here. Now I could do another one up the stem, but you know what I'm going to do instead is just go through, add some of my favorite, just basically, well that didn't do good because it went over that. Just know that that's because there's an indent there. And it'll be okay because I'm going to come back through, add some other designs, or other leaves, I should say, and we'll fix it, fix it that way. So you can go over the big leaves, you can come out like that. So you can do a little stem, a little stem in here. And then come out with a stem down here. It just makes it, I'm going to add another one down here. Be a little, because I have a little divot there. And you can come in the center too if you want of the flower and add Add some leaves, you know, in between. Let's see, like this has that. How about like that? One down in here. And I'm not going to do it on here because I did some of the bigger leaves in the center here, but I'm so afraid it's going to ruin my design. I don't want to do that. I like to put these kind of over the top just to layer it a little bit. Mm -hmm. I can just do little, little stems. Kind of do that here. Do some on here. Mm -hmm. Out here. And actually, with the size of this bottle, I've almost did the whole bottle. I think it's a little bit smaller. Maybe not. I haven't measured it. I think it's the first time I've done one of these, but See how it's almost, I've almost done the whole bottle. Almost. Okay, and then we can even, you know, come up the stem a little bit if you want. The neck of the bottle. And then you just push in your little, your little stems. And I can bring it over here, put it in there. Whoops, hit that a little bit. And just keep going around it. All right. So, so far. Now the next thing I'm going to do, and again, in this stage, you might want to put, or give it some dry time, because I'm going to go right over these. And I'm just doing it with the yellow ochre. I'm not putting in any other color with it. So it's thin. But this is where I'm showing you that, you know, if you do something like this, you can always come out, fix it, if you want to go over the top of it. 
And these I would consider kind of like shadow flowers, or not shadow flowers, but shallow, shadow leaves. Because in one stroke, you can do really thin leaves on, on projects. And those are considered kind of like shadows or ghost leaves where it's just, you know, filling in a little bit. But they're really light and airy kind of leaves. And you can go over, over the flower if you want. I can do a little stem over this leaf, or I could have just pretended that it, it had a stem coming from a different, different area. The only thing I would say is if you come out onto the glass bottle doing these, just know that they're going to be thin and not as durable as if you would go ahead and just paint them over something that you've painted already. With a bottle, it's probably not as imperative that you can be concerned with that as much. If it were a drinking glass, I'd say, yeah, you really do. Because you definitely want to make sure that it's thicker. All right, so we have that on there. And like I said, in here, you know, you could maybe throw in some of these, uh, I didn't do any up there, but anyhow, throw in some of these just basic, easy, easy um, leaves if you want, just to kind of fill it in. Because obviously in a, in a design like this, if you were putting real flowers together, it, they wouldn't be all separated like that. The leaves would be kind of intermixed. All right, so the next and last thing I'm doing, thanks so much for sticking with me. I'm gonna go back over my centers. And the reason being is I just wanna make sure I get them all, all connected, you know, so that it covers up all the leaves, or the petals, excuse me. I say leaves and petals, hopefully you understand what I'm talking about. And these are big centers, you know, that's good, that's fine. Again, we don't have to have all the same, all the same sizes. And it's okay to have big and little and a, a variety. I think I got them all, I think I had five. And what I always like to do is tip it into the white and come back over and just pounce it with some white. You know, if you had brown, I'm kind of having a shortage on my umber, burnt umber, which I really like. But, you know, just come back in, add. If you want to add dots, you can do that. I'm not going to do that on this one, but you could. If you feel like you got too much white, just go back over it a little bit, pounce it again. You know, I'm, go I'm good with these, but I'm just showing you are just kind of funny and fun fun and funky all right i hope you like this design if you do please give me a big thumbs up new to my channel please subscribe hit that notification bell before you leave please if you would share this on your social network with all your family and friends very easy to do just hit that uh, button underneath that allows you to share it'll give you the options of where you can share it and pretty easy all right Thanks so much again. I do appreciate you. I hope you enjoyed this video. And please stay safe and healthy. And until the next time, you have a good one. Bye.